All right, guys, welcome back to the Viking Academy. Professor Stephen Williams here. I want you guys to stay tuned for this one. This is a good one. We have five techniques that all white belts should know, every single white belt. But I want you to stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to give you a bonus technique. So that's going to round it off to six, all right, guys? So stay tuned and make sure you guys subscribe. Finish him. Alright guys, so we're talking about five techniques that all Brazilian Jiu Jitsu white belt should not just know but master. The first one I'm going to give you is the Americana from Side Control. So I'm going to have Sway here on his back. Typically the guy will be framing on the far side collar. So what I want you guys to focus on doing is taking full side control of the far side underhook. Extending your left shoulder back, the shoulder close to the head, and then high-fiving your partner. You know what I mean? You're going to give him that high-five action, and then this is the key. You want to get his head out of the picture. What that essentially means is I want to get my elbow pinned to his shoulder, creating an isolation of the far side arm, which is exactly what you need to get the finish. A little tight here. So from here, I'm going to bring my knees in. Now, this is the key that a lot of people don't teach it. Uh, and a lot of people don't teach it this way. I'm going to go hand over hand, not wrist. Hand over hand, hand over hand. I'm going to pinch my elbows together as tight as a vice and then move my entire arm, uh, all three of our arms towards his hip. That gets it back. So once again, in the position where I'm on top of side control and he's framing on my shoulder, I'm going to start to extend my right leg, shoot the left shoulder back, pop the palm action, exclude his head from the party, left elbow tight to the shoulder, which creates isolation on the far side. And then you're focused on getting a palm to palm grip with tight elbows, knuckles to the mat, all three arms move towards the hip and you get a tight Americana from side control. The second technique we'll be working is the fundamental arm bar from the mounted position. Now what's the central, right? The central detail is I need to take control of one of his arms. Which arm do you want to tap? Let's say it sways right arm. I'm going to grab his right wrist, cross grip his right elbow, and draw it to the center of my body. Now as soon as I draw his elbow to the center of my body, I'm going to compress it. This locks his arm into position. From this position, I'm going to slide my left knee right up to his ear and fold my far side leg under the armpit, creating tension on both sides. We call this a wedge. So I have a wedge created between my right heel and my left knee, which enables me to attack the arm and keeps his hips pinned in position. From here, I'm going to grab the arm, put my forearm on the mat, stick over the head, and finish the Juju Gatami from the top mounted position. Again. Traditional arm bar from the mounted position. I'm grabbing the wrist on the same side, cross gripping the elbow, posting and pulling. Locking my chest down makes it so that he can't retract his elbow. And then it's a straight shot my left knee, my left knee to his ear. Watch his right elbow. As I slide my knee up, it's impossible for him to escape his elbow to the ground, which makes it very easy for me to now fold my far side leg, create the wedge that we just discussed between my right heel and my left knee. I can easily attack the arm, put my form on the mat, clear the head and lock up the Juju Gatami, traditional arm bar from the mount position. At the Viking Academy, we tend to finish from the mount. In case the arm is lost, we can still salvage the position on top. Third technique, in the full guard position, traditional arm bar, the full guard. Similar to the mounted position, I'm going to be grabbing the same side of wrist, raising my hips to the ceiling, and looking for isolation of the forearm. Drawing my knees into my chest makes it so that his elbow is now pinned to my body. Free hand now shoots across the neck, which creates this sort of contrasting polarity between my left hand and my left foot. My left foot goes to the hip. I raise my hips off the mat and draw my right heel towards my knee. From this position, I can easily circle his head with my left leg, turn both of my heels towards the knee above his head, control the far side arm, and look for the arm lock. Simple arm bar from the mounted position. So what you should be looking at and what we usually talk about in Jiu-Jitsu is looking into your opponent's ear. So as I start to raise my hips and lock in that arm, it's important that I get the cross side block so he can't drive his head in towards my head. Right? It makes it easy for him to defend if he can easily throw his head in. So excluding his head from the party, left it on the hip, raising the hips up, looking into your partner's ear enables you to then clear the arm, heels towards the top of the head, heels driving down, Thumb always pointing away from me it gives you an opportunity to easily break the arm. Now 
Now on this fourth technique, you gotta master this. Now don't believe the hype. People are gonna tell you that the Kimura is a strong man move. That's not true. Those are only weak people that say that. Weak people say that this is a strong man move. It's a technical move where you're manipulating the joint. You just have to find positions and angles that work best for you. What am I gonna do? If his hands are on my body, I'm gonna bring both of my hands to the inside and start to come on his hands to the mat. In this position, I'm gonna raise the hip, circle my hips away from the arm I'm attacking, and sit up. Now, as soon as I sit up, I'm gonna place my right thumb through the gap of his elbow and connect my hands. In this position, I can easily put my left foot on the floor. Begin to circle my hips away towards the arm I'm attacking. This allows me to shallow my foot, throw my left leg to stay up on the elbow a little bit. There we go. Enables me to slice my knees together. Now here's the catch. My knees, I want them to be pinched on the same side shoulder as possible. It's not always possible. But chances are, he's trying to posture up. So you're gonna wanna put pressure on the near side shoulder, which will prevent him from being able to posture up, and which will give you the ability to, to finish the more very easily. Let's go over that again. So what I'm doing is his hands are on my body, pummeling, because I need his hands on the mat. So you pummel, knees in, open your guard, sit up. Now watch it and grab it. If you feel any sensation, you guys, if you feel any sensation that he's gonna pass, you can easily close your guard back up, no problem. But in order to create the angle, you're gonna need to put your left foot on the floor. Same side as the arm you're attacking. Now notice that he's gonna post, right? You're not gonna stay in your face, right? You're gonna stay in your elbow. Mm -hmm. You're gonna slide your hips away. Slide both knees in, and you're gonna be able to get the arm lock here. Very easy. Yeah. Stay tuned, there's going to be one more bonus uh, technique that I'm going to give you at the very end. So this is going to be our fifth one. His hands on my body, this one's going to be really sneaky. I'm going to grab both of my corner wrists, raise my hips, extend it on, shorten it on. So it's almost like you're throwing a punch. Here and here. Hips open, hips raised. I dart my legs over the shoulder, creating isolation of the head and the arm. Gives me an opportunity to lock up the triangle. Now, I'm not going to teach the triangle how we typically do it for more experienced players. We hit the more dynamic angle. This one's going to be a fundamental jiu-jitsu uh, finish for the triangle. So I'm controlling this posture with my right hand, left hand straight over the chin. I'm creating a nice angle. Now, what I typically like to do and what, you know, Henzo preaches, look into the ear, Owens. And for me, I like to reference it as if my left, if the leg going over the head is landing on top of my far side leg, my knee, I should be in proximity to lock it up and get a tight triangle finish. There we go. Double wrist control, called this motorcycle grips. Here, raising, pushing, pulling, opening your guard just enough to clear the elbow line. Hips shoot up, heels dive down, arm drives across like a seatbelt. Head control, shin control, fundamental. We're talking a uh, triangle choke that was effective this setup in the 70s. It's a very old school approach of triangle. But you need to master this version first. Heel hits the knee, lock up the triangle, toes flexed up, pulling the head down, knees pinched together, drive your heels to the mat. Staying tuned, I have a bonus uh, technique I want to show you. When you go for the Americana and the guy starts to extend his arm, this is something that's really, really sneaky. So if I have him down to it and I go for this Americana lock, his natural reaction a lot of the times. So I'm keeping the pressure. This goes back to the first technique we drilled, right? All white belts should master this, so make sure you guys rewind this. The guy starts extending his arm, very typical of this. I'm going to lock his arm into position, just like so. My ear's gonna be nice and tight to his form. From here, I'm gonna slide both of my legs across his sternum. My right knee goes over the belly, my left leg traces his head. Watch this, left hand on the mat, put the leg down. Watch my leg down, ready? Up, and watch my left leg. Just scoop under his head. And I'm pinching my knees together. From this position, all you have to do is bring both of your elbows to your chest, and you're gonna get a, gr a very, very strong break on the arm. In the event that he sits up, here and here, you'll be able to finish, finish the technique from the top side position. Yeah.
Now for the new guys, the new white belts, this is contextual, right? If I'm going for an arm lock and he straightens his arm out, which is a natural reaction, just stop that shortened angle for the break, straightens his arm out, this is what we're gonna do, really simple. He does what he needs to do, but it's my job to clear that space and hug the arm. Now everything goes across his body laterally. Focus on my leg position now. Knees tight. I'm now squeezing my knees together. Now the grip that I like to practice is, a, is a, an elbow to elbow grip, which gives you a lot of torque on the elbow. So if you look at my arm, I'm grabbing here. Both elbows are grabbing together. And I'm squeezing both my elbows towards my chest. And on a more technical level, if you want to get more advanced, I'm actually retracting my left elbow to the ceiling. Forehead on the mat. He sits up. What do I do? Keep your knees tight. Sit up to your knees. You come up to his knees. Ear pinch to your shoulder. Squeeze straight down for the finish. Now guys, I know that that's a, a tremendous amount of techniques, a lot of detail in this video. But thankfully it's YouTube, so you can easily go back, rewind, pause, and take your time. Make sure you drill these. These are five techniques that all white belts should know. Every white belt starting jiu-jitsu should know these techniques. Not just know them, but master them. And now you have a bonus technique that's just gonna change the world. None of your partners are gonna know what's coming. So make sure you guys subscribe. Thank you for checking us out. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video.